James, it's a real pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks for coming. It's wonderful to be here. Now, a lot of us know you as the, the maker guy, right, with the AIY project, but you know, can you just tell us about yourself? What is it that you do here at Google? So my, my primary job is, is hardware engineer on AIY. Um, okay. And, but that's not, that's not my, my, my top secret mission. So my, my, my top secret mission really is to build things that build engineers. I'm trying to um, get the coolest of Google technology uh, which is artificial intelligence. Right. Um, get that out so that makers and, and students and everybody um, can use that in their own projects. Right, and one of your first things that you've done with that is this thing, right? Yes. And this is the before, and this is the after. Right. So can you show us how it works? Sure. How tall is a space needle? Oh, that's so trite. The space needle is 605 feet tall. Let's try some other ones. What is Union Pacific 844? According to Wikipedia, Union Pacific 844 is a 484 Northern type steam locomotive built by the American Locomotive Company in December 1944 for the Union Pacific Railroad. Nice. So I know you like trains, right? And I do. Wasn't there like a little thing as you were designing this that you designed it for trains? So when we, we got our prototypes back and one of the, as we were getting to our production, we never had enough, quite enough time to get enough prototypes built. Um, so we were having a demo. And I said, I cleared the weekend. I was like, I've got to build some stuff with this thing. Uh, right. we, can't, we can't have people dog putting it without me uh, testing it myself. <laughs> right. um, so I looked around the house to try to figure out what to control. And I saw my trains there. I was like, well, well, let's go drive the trains. And I went to go connect the trains to it. And I had to cut the circuit board up in, in order to drive the trains. And okay. I thought, this, this will never go. This will never do. Um, so I stopped literally at that instant, went back and changed the design. Um, <laughs> change the circuit board design so it would be easier to control trains. Right, so a ship stopper on the original design was it didn't work with your train set, That's right. so you, you got right. it to work with your got train it. set. And I think, I think we have a video of that. Should we take a look? Train, fast. Motors or lights or servos or anything else that you can control with an electrical signal. It literally is just that simple. If you can plug wires into a circuit board, then you can connect a motor to the voice kit. Train, stop. Now that looks like cool. Do you have a lot of trains? I do. So, so the one you saw in the video, um, the gray diesel engine, mm -hmm. um, that's an old uh, SP model, uh, SD9, and then my pride and joy, which is that UP844 model, which showed up at the end. Okay. Um, and there's a bunch of others. I, I live near, I live in Seattle, and um, there's a famous train that goes from Seattle to Chicago, um, the Empire Builder. Um, okay. And the scale that I model in is N scale, so that's 1 to 160. Okay. And that train, um, I have it on my wall, it is six and a half feet long. Um, wow. So I had to go build a special wall display unit just to put this train on the wall. <laughs> nice. And then you get to control the trains That's via right. this project, so That's which is right. pretty cool. So now uh, I know we released a bunch of these and they kind of sold out really quickly, right? They did. They? So and it was a, you had a magazine in the UK, I think. So we was... had our, our, our launch partner was Raspberry Pi uh, Foundation. Mm -hmm. And they have a magazine called MagPi, mm -hmm. um, which is all about the Raspberry Pi single board computer. Um, so the Raspberry Pi, it's a computer about this big. Mm -hmm. And the real breakthrough isn't the size. We're used to small computers now. It's the cost. It's a $35 computer. You plug in your keyboard and your monitor, and you're ready to go. Nice. Um, so it, it, has, it has really revolutionized the low end and the educational market for computing. Um, so it was an obvious partner for us to have enough compute to, to do what we want to do. It is the most popular uh, single board computer. Easy, easy thing. And, they are super and cool. We, yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah. And, and we got along famously. The cultures of, of Raspberry Pi, what they're trying to do with education and outreach, what we're trying to do with machine intelligence, um, basically to democratize it, to, to, to commodify it, to make it as right. simple as you know, putting a, a Lego brick or a servo or a motor. You, know, you just take your machine intelligence block Right. and you put it onto your project and you're ready to go. Yep. Now, when you first told me about this, it was like I said, I want to put this to the test as an education thing. So I knew some high school kids and some of these were part of a robotics club. So we gave them a bunch of these and we gave them some Raspberry Pis and we gave them five days to see what they would do with it. Should we take a look? Let's take a look. Cool. We can also have it to turn left. Turn left. Nice. <laughs> Stop. Pawn to D5. Pawn takes D5 your move. Yep, and it just takes, and then you go on. Shop for a New York Mets jersey. Candies. Giving you two 
<laughs> so we get plural as well. Nice, and red is my favorite, so I'm glad I got a couple of reds. So. Pretty cool stuff, that right? That awesome. Did any of them jump out at you? Well, so, I mean, the three favorites I'll see are um, the walking robot. So Isn't that I, cool? I used to be a, a robotics professor, so anything right. that gets up and moves and moves <laughs> around is near and dear to my heart. Um, nice. The, uh, I also really liked the shopping um, example, because that, that was a pure software make. And I don't want people to think that makes have to be, you know, blocks and, and screws and soldering and stuff. Um, uh, right. Making with software um, is just as, as, yeah. as important, um, and connecting things together. Um, uh, the software is critical because the right. whole world, that's how the whole world works. Right. Um, but obviously, if you put Lego and candy <laughs> together, I mean, what could be, what could, what be could go wrong? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so life so, is good. <laughs> and and the, the other thing there is that, that, that the, there is sophistication and subtlety there, um, mm -hmm. but, but it, it has the, the look that, well, you know, anyone can do this. Right. Um, the robots got all these wires and crazy stuff, the software, um, all the magic is hidden and you can't right. see how all the delicacy there. But the Lego stuff, yeah, maybe yeah. I could do that. Now, yeah. of course, it's never that simple. Um, and that's what, that's what you'll learn when you go to build. And then, but then when you get it working, yep. um, the feeling of accomplishment and, and joy. Look, I, I built a little Lego thing. And yeah. you take it, put it on your shelf. Yeah. Anytime you want, you want some candy, boop. Yeah. Candy. When, when she first told me she was going to build a candy dispenser, I thought she was like buying an off-the-shelf candy dispenser and just pinning it and then controlling that. And I thought, okay, it's kind of cool. It's kind of good. Like high school kids do that. Yeah, yeah. And then she shows up with the one that she oh, made herself. I, I was like, so well, jaw on the floor kind so of thing. So. And it, it's just amazing like what a bunch of kids, when we gave them five days, were able to do. And it was like when we first gave them this, it was like, you were there. We probably have That's some right. footage of it. They were so quiet. They, right. they were a little intimidated. And then they just went away and they just started building so all that's, these amazing that's, things. That's, that's the magic right there, mm -hmm. is, is to have this machine intelligence. Um, you know, in, in, in these projects, there's kind of like a connector between some input that they've got in the physical world and some output that they've got in the physical world. Right. Um, and, and to put that machine intelligence right in the middle um, is exactly what we want to do. Um, yeah. Because right now, machine intelligence, it really is everywhere, but it's a very enterprise-y kind of yeah. big server kind of back-end thing. And that's just not how it needs to be. Right. And I don't even think that's how it should be. I think that the world would be better uh, when more people are building more things that are smarter. Absolutely. And it was something that you said right at the beginning of when we were talking about it, that you build engineers. Well, right. so I used to. I used to actually be directly in the engineer creation business. I, I used to be a professor, okay. um, and and um, I didn't get to play with any of the cool toys as a professor. So my job was <laughs> to get live in the lab with cool toys, and have my students build build stuff, um, do science, write papers. Um, but the engineering supported the science. But what I can't always kept coming back to is that you know I really, what I really am enjoying doing is building engineers, mm -hmm. um, and I got distracted by outreach programs and things in museums and other stuff that wasn't along the straight and narrow path of academia. Right. And eventually, I had, to, I had to decide that you know if I'm going to want to do this, um, I need more. I, 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 I need yeah. better toys, basically. <laughs> um, I need a bigger. We all toy need box. better toys. <laughs> um, so so the, the the path to Google um, and then and then the, the serendipitous path to this project right. um, was just fantastic. Yeah, but I, I think with the experience that we're just talking about, like just getting this box and having you know open it up and we see it's like a, a bunch of cardboard components and then circuit boards and a button. Everybody yeah. loves the button, right? Yeah, the button's you great. Know, I, I like to just take it out and play with it. Uh, yeah. We had to fight so hard for that button. Um, <laughs> so we couldn't find it, and the vendor wasn't there, it was late, and we couldn't figure out how to pay them. It was just so much problem to get that button. But, but I mean, you know, it's such a wonderful... I'm sure we'll see biased about the button. Yeah, I, I think everybody likes the button. As soon as you put it on the desk, the first thing is people reach up and press the button. So we have a partnership with uh, ITP at okay. NYU, um, and that's, that's a design studio. Their, their slogan is, I do believe, uh, the art of the, of the, the newly possible. Mm -hmm. um, so what's at the cutting edge of technology that they can get their hands on? And then how, what does that mean from a, a design point of view and a user experience point of view and, a, and a, a human interaction point of view? So we showed up to talk to them about, no, here's our kits. Do you want to use them in your summer class? Like, yes, we love it. And the, the first thing they said was, look at this button. And they, they, they started pushing on the button. I was like, well, this button has meaning. And they, they used a bunch of, I'm, I'm an engineer. Mm -hmm. So they're using a bunch of very serious um, UI, artsy words that describe the, the immediacy of it, the human interaction, and things that I didn't understand. But they, there's, there's theory about, about um, you see this and you want to push it. Right. So that, that desire to do it, now you can use that to get the thing to do something. And it pulls the thing into the world. And it, it, yeah. 
basically they like the buttons too. Yeah. I, I just love it. I push it and say candy and I got candy. Right? You see? It, was like, see? it was really, really cool. But yeah, so back on the theme of like building engineers. Um, so our experience was that it worked really, really well with that experiment. Yeah. And But what if people want to do this for themselves? Where would they get started? How can they get going and building one of these by themselves? So we're, we're working on making it just as easy as possible. Uh, we, we are um, working to move these things into retail chains. Um, mm -hmm. So the first batch, we, we freely admit we totally underestimated the popularity. Um, we built, they even ended up on eBay, right? They ended up on eBay for we, the, the, the kit in, in the States. I want to say it was fourteen ninety five. Is, is an imported magazine in mm. the UK. I think it was seven pounds. Right. Um, on eBay, you know, one hundred twenty dollars for this thing. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, Adam Smith. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Adam Smith have spoken, um, and and the the solution there is just to crank up the factories, and we're, we're doing a second run, and so soon. Uh, hopefully by the time you see this, there'll be enough to have right. um, everyone. So we have a website where people we can do. go to find we it do. and like open source code and all that kind of the thing. The website, the documentation, the maker guide, the, the sign up sheet for the waiting list, it's all available on the website. Okay, so it's aiyprojects.withgoogle.com. There we go. Thank you so much, James. That was awesome. It's been great being here. And if you want to learn more about the AIY project, please take a look at the website. We've linked it in the description below. If you have any questions for me or if you have any questions for James, just please also leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much, James. Oh, it's been a great time being here. And and go build something great, right? Build something awesome.